What's up, everybody? This is Matt with Technorax Royalty for your music. How are you guys doing? Um, so, a couple weeks ago, I just decided to make a video uh, showcasing some of the different synthesizers that I got when I upgraded from Reason 9 to Reason 10. And um, so, I uh, saw so a few of you guys were interested in it, and I'm, I'm appreciating that. But I asked on Twitter whether you guys would be interested on me showcasing another synthesizer that I have. Uh, and basically that synthesizer is a uh, modular synth, um, kind of. It's uh, encased in a synthesizer program called Reactor. But it's basically, I'm showcasing uh, the blocks portion of that synthesizer. And um, a few guys, a few of you guys said yes. So I'm going to basically try and demonstrate that to you right now. And hopefully you'll come out with something a little bit interesting. So, without further ado, this is Reactor 6. Uh, Reactor is a program that has been around for a long, long time, uh, for at least 12, 15 years, actually. Um, it's a really old program, but it's also been uh, very helpful in developing a lot of synthesizers that maybe you guys use or maybe not. Um, and to show you why, it, it's really pretty easy um, to see I get uh, um, overwhelmed with this, but there's a lot of like really basic building blocks that you can utilize. Um, and I've heard it described as basically rocket science by, by people in the past. And that can be basically true because you do have things like math functions and, and logical functions that you can choose from to be able to construct synthesizers. In the past, I've been able to do this myself although not quite as complicated or as natural as some people have been able to do. Because there are people out there that basically devote a lot of time and effort to, in order to make their own synthesizers. Um, and more power to them. Uh, uh, I, I will one day have that kind of time on my hands, but that is not today. But in any case... Um, the basic, you know, as you can see, you can basically get down to the nitty gritty here and utilize these things to create math functions, uh, wave table fun functions, probably, and also your own effects as well, and uh, samplers, those kind of things. But the, 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 the portion of reactor that we want to look at right now is called reactor blocks. And what reactor blocks is, it's a sort of it's a sort of a simulation of something called modular synthesis. And what that is, it's more of an analog topic that um, you can basically, in real life, if you don't want to utilize software and you like to do things in the analog way, one of the ways to basically build your own synthesizers is to utilize this thing called rack modules or modular, modular devices to basically be able to build your own synthesizers. And I'll show you how that works as we go through. Uh, basically, one of the advantages of doing this is that um, you do learn about the basics of the synthesis, and you realize that some of these new VSTs that they're coming out with are are basically they abstract some of the functions away from from synthesizer design in order for simplicity. But you get to be able to gain a more of, of an appreciation on how they originally worked. Also, you can uh, you can basically have a little bit more freedom to basically design your own synthesizers using these blocks and create your own patches and sounds that will be totally unique. And of course, one of the most important things about these modular synthesizers, especially in this VSD environment, is that the, the modules themselves are basically recreated to a very high degree of accuracy and so you can argue that a lot of the uh, synthesizer patches that you can develop have a very analog feel to it it's not perfect but it's a lot closer to an analog feel than say the europa synthesizer that i i showed you guys last time and that's that's a good thing it, it like uh, the europa synthesizers are good in their own way but this is more for an analog feel the 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 waveforms a little bit more are a little bit more simple and they are a little bit more analogy and i'll show you what that means when we get started or we're gonna get started right now actually 
All right, so this is the workspace of Reactor. And basically what I'm gonna show you is how things work to in Reactor by basically placing down a device. And one of the devices that I want to basically place in is the note in module right here. So you have two different window panes here. One is the panel view, which basically has all the knobs that you can basically tweak to, to basically adjust your sound from here. But also you have the panel view right here, which is the the wire, wire diagram of the synthesizer itself. And this is basically the inner workings of the synthesizer. So you have two different views here. Um, it's sort of like in Reason, where you have the front view of your panels, but the, the way things are connected um, you would press the tab button. You've got a bunch of wires going here and there. It's sort of like that here where this is these are the wires that connect your modules and effects uh, in a certain way. Um, so all right. So basically this is a note in and basically what it does is it allows the uh, synthesizer to interpret keyboard and MIDI inputs and put it into the works here so you can utilize it for your sounds. All right, so the other things, one of the other things that we need to do is we need to gain a, um, we need to get a an oscillator. So let me basically get one of those. We'll put one of these right here. I don't really want that one. Let's delete that one real quick. I want this one right here. I like this one a lot, actually. It's uh, basically a five, um, oscillator 5 and basically what it is it's got basically um, oscillators in different uh, octaves right here this is the lowest octave and this is the highest octave and once we get this wired up we'll show you what we need to do right now is we need to wire the pitch output CV output of the note in module to the input pitch uh, input of the oscillator uh, of the oscillator module here and then um, what we need is a VCA, which is this right here. So this is kind of an abstract thing, but this is basically the oscillator. And this is the amplifier that makes the oscillator. It makes it so you can hear the oscillator. It basically amplifies it so it's audible to the human ear. And what I can do here this is uh, essentially enough to make uh, a sound, but as you can he see here, there's nothing being output by the VCA now. But if I put the level knob up, there's a little bit of sound. And reason the reason for that click is that we haven't actually input any pitch notes here. And what I'll do is I'm gonna press a T key right here. And there you go. You've got a little bit, you've got a technical synthesizer here, but uh, obviously things are a little bit more complicated than that. Obviously, you don't want to be able to, you don't want to have to like uh, twist this knob to be able to uh, put any sound out onto your mix here. So you, you're going to have to have a little bit more of a complex setup here. So the next thing what, that we're going to do is we are going to find ourselves the envelope. And the envelope, let me find it real quick. Is it, I believe it's here, the mod ADSR, ADSR envelope here. And we're going to basically move it so it's before the VCA. And we're gonna move the back end here so the, the envelope is behind the VCA. We'll, we're gonna rename it here the, um, the amp envelope. There you go. We're going to wire that out to the mod A of the VCA here. And we are going to wire the gate from the note in module here to the envelope here. So basically what happens is when you press a key, the gate signal from the note in module will travel from the output here to the gate input of the envelope and the envelope will basically then then send the signal on the output to the mod a input of the vca here and as you can see the a uh, indicator here is marked 
meaning that you've got a wire from the out to the mod A input here. And you can select it and you can see this little rocker right here. That basically means that your envelope, you can basically control the amount of um, control, the input control from the envelope by basically manipulating this, this uh, right here. So now that I've basically um, uh, manipulated the rocker all the way up, and I can now put uh, press a key. That's a little bit loud. Let's kind of adjust it a little bit so it's not so loud. All right, so now I can press a key and we've got a basic note. And that's how synthesizers work. Um, so before I go any further, I just want to kind of um, go over the envelopes here. This is basically your basic envelope. So if I've got a long attack, you can you can affect it so it's either long or short it uh the it basically affects the time that you need to get from zero to your full amount and the same goes for decay this is um you can have a short decay that's a very short decay So with a, a short decay, you, it, it basically, um, uh, if it, and it works along with the sustain too. So if you've got a low sustain here, it, it allows you to basically have a more dynamic sound by being, being able to uh, uh, um, uh, affect the uh, levels after you reach the highest level on your attack here. And then of course, You've got release here. So that once you release a key, that basically um, determines how much time the level goes from full or your sustained amount to zero. So and that that's basically it. And, and then. With uh, the oscillators, they've got their own little um, things going on. Actually, what we can do, so if you want to see what's going on with the uh, scope here, or with the uh, oscillator here, we can add ourselves a scope. We've got a very fancy scope here. And we'll basically wire it from the VCA to the input of the oscillator uh, of the scope here. And as you can see, we can actually see what's going on with the, the waveforms here. <clears throat> and when we can do that, we can basically see what's going on when we add in different oscillators in this oscillator module. So as you can see, the, the wave is a little bit more complicated because we've basically added in the lowest oscillator, which is the base oscillator here, and one oscillator that is um, one octave higher than the lowest octave. We can actually turn that down. We'll put this back up here. And this is an octave higher. This is two octave higher than the lowest octave. Right. Okay. And then um, you you get the idea. Like this is one octave higher and one, one octave higher. So this is really high. And then we've got this really interesting one here. It's kind of an invert, and it you it I it has a. Um, it has a five step um, difference between these oscillators here. So. so really cool. It, it adds a little bit of a thickness and, and a little bit of a distant dissonance there. Um, we can also affect the shape here, right? This shape right here is the, it's the, uh, the pole, the uh, square wave. And we can basically invert it so it look, acts more like a, um, uh, a sine wave. So the sound is a little bit less harsh. We can also affect the pulse width by... So the pulse width is a little bit shorter. And you get a little bit more of a thinner sound. Right. There you go. And that's just this one oscillator. There are a, lot, a few more oscillators that come with this. 
Also some optional oscillators that I haven't really bought yet, but uh, they are up for sale if you want to like basically add to the, the arsenal of modules that you get with this program. Of course, that's not the only thing you can do to manipulate the sound. You've got uh, these things called filters. Grab a filter here. This is a basic filter right here. And as you can see, this is the filter module here. Um, let's put it down here. We basically it can arrange this so this is simple to to have. We'll basically put the filter right here, and we can actually um, we'll wire the output of the VCA into the input of the filter, and we will wire the output of the filter into the outputs of the program. And so basically, what we've got is we've got three basic filters that you can choose from. You can choose from, this is a low pass filter here, this is a band pass filter here, and this is a uh, high pass filter here. So we'll go with a low pass, and I've got a, a few notes basically programmed in here. Right, and so we can, that's not, that's a low pass filter, but the, the cutoff frequency is all the way up, so it's not really filtering anything out, but what we can do, is we can put the cutoff frequency out down. And as you can see, it filters out the high sounds and only allows the lower sounds to basically go. Right. Obviously the bandpass is it allows only a certain uh, amount of signals in a narrow bandwidth range to basically uh, pass while everything else is filtered out. So, and then of course we've got the high pass filter, which is the opposite of a low pass filter. And you can add resonance here. So you get a little bit of attitude when you're basically adjusting uh, your frequencies here. So go, let's go ahead and do the low pass filter. And obviously, once again, uh, you can basically adjust this manually to get your sounds. But in order to achieve a more dynamic sound, you obviously you want to kind of automate this. And that's where you can utilize our combination of the um, envelopes and the VCAs to kind of um, utilize that. Not the VCA. We'll utilize the VCA for something else. But for now, we'll just basically copy an envelope and we'll do, uh, we'll, we'll, let's just basically duplicate, duplicate that because that's easier. Uh, so let's see, let's rename this the filter envelope. Filter envelope, right? All right. So now we can find this in our mix here and see where it went. There it is, right there. All right, cool. So we'll put it down here kind of and we'll bring our filter back up sometimes this is a little bit of a pain in the ass to basically there we go all right so this is our filter en envelope and uh, the way we utilize our envelope for the filter is basically the same way we utilize our envelope for the vca mod We'll basically just wire the envelope output to the modulation A input of the filter right here. And as you can see, we've got a uh, the A modulation indicator is marked. And when we click on that, we'll be able to basically see um, uh, ways that we can modify with this modulation input. So, all right. So... If we have a low pass filter, what we can do is we can basically set our frequency or cutoff frequency to a very low amount. And then what we can do is then um, adjust the mod uh, modulation amount by this much right here. And then we can affect the way uh, the, the filter is modulated by adjusting the envelope here. So. So as you can see, um, I kind of kept some of my settings here from the the amp envelope and you can see that the release time is at uh, 1.8 seconds. When I release a note, 
then that's when you can hear the release of the filter right there. But we can actually change that. We'll basically put the release all the way down to zero, almost one millisecond. And then we'll put our sustain down by a little bit and our decay by about, well, let's see, 800. Yeah. So basically when I'm pressing this, You can see that the the sustain amount the sustain amount is where it holds right there, and the decay time is basically the time it takes from going all the way to its assigned value to to the sustain right there. And if I want to make it a longer um, uh, decay, I'll basically just adjust that knob. We'll say three seconds. And you can see that that basically automates the uh, the cutoff, so it's a little bit slower. Yeah. Okay. So there's other ways that we can. The, these are the basic building blocks. This is basically a basic synthesizer, and you you can hear that the sound is fairly good too. Um, we can go a little bit more advanced here if you want. Let's go ahead and add another oscillator. Uh, this is a bento box oscillator, a little bit different from uh, oscillator 5 here. Uh, essentially what it is, it's kind of like a wavetable synthesizer, honestly. But it's basically, um, it's kind of like the first setting of uh, Europa in that you've got basically kind of these different um, morphed values of basic uh, waveforms. So obviously you've got your square wave there, you've got a triangle wave there, and you've got, well that's a saw wave. Yeah, I get that mixed up. That's the solid wave right there. We've got a triangle, and then finally we've got a sine wave right there. So it's like I said in in my in my Europa video, like this is basically kind of like a wavetable that adjusts between like basic waveforms and everything. Um, so let's put that right there because we're going to basically, um, ad like we're going to, um. We're going to organize these things so they're a little in a, a very, uh, very readable manner here. Hopefully, at least we'll duplicate our filter, our our filter envelope. We're going to uh, re rename it a mod ev envelope. And what we're going to do here is we're going to basically um, use it to feed the oscillator here. Um, well, we'll we'll have to have a VCA as well because we're going to be modding this right there. <clears throat> so what we'll do is, let's see, we'll duplicate this, which is a VCA. We'll bring this uh, down. Well, let's rename it the mod VCA, right? Okay. And we'll bring it down here just so... Uh, We'll bring it down here just so um, it, we have it next to the oscillator that we want to basically um, utilize this with. Let's go over here. That makes a little bit more sense. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of this line that's feeding this from the original oscillator. And instead, we're going to wire the pitch uh, out of the note in module right here into the pitch input of the oscillator here and we'll bring it into the VCA over here. And also we need to get rid of this wire right here and then uh, wire the output of this new envelope that we duplicated just now into the mod A input of the VCA over here. And then what we're going to do now is we're gonna wire this VCA into the mod A of oscillator five. <laughs> really weird. It seems kind of weird, but it's it's actually a, a common practice in synthesizer design. This is called modulation, uh, frequency modulation. <clears throat> so now that we've got that um, wired up, now what we need to do is we need to go to oscillator 5 here that we just mo uh, wired the output of this VCA to, to modulation A, the mod A indicator here. And as you can see, now I can actually modify different aspects of this oscillator based on the input of the VCI here. 
All right. So what we can do, we can uh, we can basically utilize this here, and we'll utilize this here, and we'll utilize this here and there. Right? Okay. The other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we're affecting our VCA here. That looks, that sounds really good actually. So yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of like a modulation going on here. Let's see, make sure that we're, let's see. Let's move the mod envelope so it's right next to the VCA. So in in order to better demonstrate this, this sounds really good, by the way, we're going to put our sustain all the way up. And then what we can do is we can, we can, we can actually um, control our, or the pitch of the new oscillator here. I think, hold on just a second. So are we doing anything right here? So decay. bring the output you can kind of hear it but let's uh, bring the decay back up here uh, and also the decay on the the and the sustained up on the filter envelope and so I suspect you can hear it's a really kind of dirty right here right so what I'm suspecting though is that when we bring the sustain down here you'll and also the decay down as well, you'll be able to hear a dif difference when this oscillator dies down. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. Hmm, I'm at a loss here. Let's go ahead and bring, let's see, we can go ahead and bring our modulations back up here. Let's see if we can't, uh, let's see. Kind of at a loss. There we go. Anyways, yeah. What are we doing wrong here? I know. Okay, so we've got the mod A input right there. And it's going to the right place. Uh, let's see. And the mod A is going to the right place as well. Let's see if we can't play around with the oscillator by just a little bit. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's basically put the sustain all the way up. There we go, okay. So sometimes it takes a little bit, I guess my decay was a little bit, a little bit um, too much, or it was a little bit too fast. Sorry about that, but as you can see, we can actually affect the the, the modulation by the, the pitch here and everything. So, uh, we can gain this by a little bit. And we'll, we'll 
bring the sustain back all the way up. So you can get really gnarly, nasty sounds with this. Yeah, right. So you've got that. You can you can basically play around with that. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to know that these oscillators can work really well in octaves. So if you do a negative 12, you can basically have a kind of clean note, but also modified at the same time. Which works in different ways here. So... Yeah, right? Um, so you can, some of the other things that you can do, we can actually add in a clock and I can show you how that works. Um, this is getting a little bit advanced here, but we'll add in a clock as well. So what a clock is, is it basically allows you to um, do things like program sequencers. So you don't have to actually program in notes. You can utilize sequencers instead. So what we'll do is we'll do that. We'll bring in a sequencer as well. So go into the, let's see. Let's, uh, we'll do a, a eight step sequencer here. And the, this is getting very jumbled. So you can basically kind of like utilize new space as you need it. And as you can see, um, you've got uh, you've got a different thing going on here. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's wire up the pitch and also the gate. And then we can put the pitch out here to different things. We'll do uh, pitches. I think that's all we need for the pitch and then for the gate we can like replace all the gates um, of of the note in module with the gates of uh, the clock instead and I think that's all I've got right here we've basically got everything that we need and in order to play these notes we can hit the the timer right here and I don't have any sound yet, but as you can see right now, we're utilizing the clock to basically go through these step sequencers and stuff. And now I need to figure out exactly what I'm doing with the, uh, with the gate signals. So please bear with me here. Um, right. So what we can do, gate, gate, uh, Looks like we also need a gate signal here as well. There we go. Nice. All right. So basically, we'll basically move the clock signal up here. So it's right next to this uh, sequencer. So basically what we've got is a an eight-step sequ sequ uh, sequencer. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the, uh, the uh, mod VCA so we don't have that kind of grading on us because we're still kind of in an experimental, experimental stage here. So let's go back to our clocker. A lot better sound, wouldn't you agree? So you can basically uh, affect the, the um, note value here. Um, by increasing or decreasing the values. So we can basically set this to what, um, we'll set this to an F sharp, I guess. Uh, we'll do a B flat here, a, a sharp and C, and we'll do an F sharp again, and then a G sharp, and then we'll do, let's see, a C sharp or a C, and then a, a A sharp as well. Hmm. And then I think we need to activate these notes actually. So we'll do that. And 
I believe these are like velocity gates that we can actually affect as well. So if you want to affect the, the amount, although I don't know that it's going to matter with this setup, you need a little bit more of a complicated setup before you can do the gates and everything. So. Right, okay, yeah. So there you go. Um, to make this sounds uh, pretty good, uh, even better, uh, we have different effects that we can utilize. Um, we do have a, a reverb setting around here somewhere. Let me gather it up. So we've got a pro sampler, a sample hold, CD processor, alpha. We've got X fade mix, that's not it. We've got a multi-wave oscillator. We've got a quantizer, a clock divider. We've got an FX driver. This is basically, um, you you can utilize this for like distortion effects like this. Um, you also have you um, different oscillators, different filters. Uh, where is the, we have different uh, modern filters here. Let's see, rounds. There you go, here it is. This is the reverb. I want to basically utilize this. So we'll basically put this at the end of the um, chain here. We'll hit the play. And for some reason, I'm only getting the left side here. That's interesting. Is that because I don't know. Let's go ahead and s see if we can. Oh, that's pretty wild, isn't it? Okay, all right. Um, we can also put the uh, distortion in between that and here. So we'll, be, we'll be basically do this. And I see exactly why we are only hearing the left and right there. Okay, so we can basically put the output of the right there. And then we can utilize our distortion model. And it's basically kind of like a stomp box that you can utilize as well. So we'll basically hit the... So that's my tour of the basic building blocks of Reactor 6 blocks. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, let me know if you want to know anything else about uh, what I do around here. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it.